Darkest Dungeon has many status ailments that do damage over time. While we've covered Blight in another video, this time let's break down how to use Bleed to do consistent damage and whittle your enemies down. This is going to be a short guide on how to build a party that just inflicts a lot of bleed damage to enemies. Now mind you, this is with the Crimson Court DLC, so just keep that in mind. Besides the characters and the trinkets, the basic strategy can still apply even if you don't have the DLC. So the strategy for this bleed party is actually very simple. You just want to make sure that you're inflicting as much bleed onto the opponents as possible so that whenever it's their turn, they're just going to take a lot of bleed damage. This party is broken down by having, from the back to the front, the Occultist, Jester, Hellion, and the Flagellant. The first person who you want to move is always the Jester, just so he can cast Battle Ballad to give the rest of your party a high ACC chance, and that way you're hitting all your hits. Then after that, just let your Hellion and Flagellant run wild as they inflict a lot of bleed damage. The Flagellant is especially good at inflicting this bleed, and then the Hellion does a great job of kind of rounding that out. Last but not least, you've also brought the Occultist, so this way you can use things like the Weakening Curse to make your enemies a little bit easier to hit, and on top of that too, you have Weird Reconstruction, which also can make your own party bleed, but does a lot of heals, so that's why they're still a part of this bleed party. Alright, so moving on to abilities. The Occultist, once again, you're bringing the Occultist for heals, and on top of that too, that inflicts bleed on your own party. The only two spells you want to make sure that you're bringing for this Occultist is Weird Reconstruction and Weakening Curse. The other two, they're up to you. Another way, another thing is you could mark as well, that way it reduces the enemy's dodge, but that's completely on you. Next up is the Jester. They're really good for buffs, so bringing Battle Ballad is extremely important just to boost your overall accuracy. Of course, you can bring Slice Off as well. This helps to make sure that their even more bleeding effects are stacked. And if you're feeling it, then you can also bring Finale. Finale is a great way to just finish off any big enemies right off the bat after using some of these buffs. Next up for the Hellion, you want to make sure that the Hellion brings, if it bleeds, Adrenaline Rush, and Bleed Out. These skills are all focused on increasing the attack power and accuracy while increasing the bleed damage that can be tossed out for the Hellion. And last but not least, at the very front, we've got the Flagellant, where basically you want Punish, Reign of Sorrows, Exa Exsanguinate, and Redeem. Exsanguinate is really good for last minute healing because you can only use this ability when you're under 40% and it inflicts the most bleed damage that I'm pretty sure you can in a single turn by giving 5 points of damage for 3 rounds. Of course Punish helps do bleed in the front row and Reign of Sorrows is going to do bleed in the back row. Redeem is also good just to give you a little bit more health in case you fall below 40% HP. Just because the Occultist, well, can heal, it's always good to bring a little bit of extra healing just because the Occultist can only heal one person at a time. So for trinkets, starting with the Occultist, you want to make sure that the Occultist is going to have a debuff trinket as well as some sort of healing trinket. For debuff trinkets, you can have the Cursed Incense, Demon's Cauldron, Debuff Stone, or the Debuff Amulet. As for healing trinkets, there really isn't a lot. You've got the Churgian's Charm, Ancestor Scroll, and Jania's Head. So keep in mind if you don't have any of these healing trinkets, giving another debuff or a speed is also an acceptable option here. But for my occultist, I like to run the Demon's Cauldron as well as Jania's Head. Yeah, I just think it works out really well for it. Next up is the Jester. The only other unique trinket that you want to throw on here is a speed trinket, whether that's the Speed Stone, Swift Cloak, Berserk Charm, Feather Crystal, or the Quick Draw Charm. Personally, I like giving him the Feather Crystal. I think that works pretty well. As for the rest of the trinkets, well, anything that is going to increase that bleed skill chance, that's something that you want here. This includes the Bleed Stone, Bleed Amulet, Punishment Hood, Bleeding Pendant, Bloody Dice, Shard of Glass, and the Mark of the Outcast. It's honestly up to you which ones you want to pick here. Personally, I like the Punishment's Hood, Bloody Dice, Shard of Glass, Mark of the Outcast, and then something else just to maybe increase ACC or something like that. But that's kind of up to you as long as you have a really high chance for inflicting bleed. And that's going to be about it. General tips, I'm going to recommend always trying to take out a single enemy at a time. And luckily, some of these abilities do bleed damage to multiple enemies, so that way you can inflict a lot of bleed. But always focus down a single enemy, and then that way they don't have a move, which means that they can inflict stress or damage your party, which means you've got less stuff to worry about. And that's going to wrap up this quick tutorial on how to put together a bleed party in Darkest Dungeon. Let me know what you thought. I know that this was run in the Crimson Court DLC, hence the Flagellant and a lot of these other trinkets as well. But, you know, if you have another build, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. Of course, check out my other videos on the channel, Darkest Dungeon Tips. Get ready for Darkest Dungeon 2, y'all. But until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye, guys.